it might be time to cancel my Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. I just used Luminar Neo to edit my last batch of portraits and the results are pretty insane. Special thanks to the folks over at Luminar Neo for allowing me to test the software and share my honest, real opinions with you guys. Okay, I might not be switching just yet, but I did want to test out what Luminar Neo could do. Could it hold its own against programs like Lightroom and Photoshop, the things that I've been using for years in order to work with my photography? In this video, I'll be going over what I liked, what I didn't like, and whether or not I think that Luminar Neo is a good alternative or replacement for people who are looking for something to maybe get rid of their Adobe Creative Cloud photography subscription. First things first, when you open the program, I must say that it is very clean. All of the tools are exactly where you would expect them to be. And it even has these added capabilities like every tool being maskable, which gives it a Photoshop-like quality and also the ability to have different layers and versions. These things alone make it just a slightly more elevated version than what you would find in Adobe's Lightroom and Photoshop. After poking around in Luminar Neo and really editing a whole batch of photos with it, I've decided that there are a few standout features that really have become my favorite and enhanced my overall editing experience. The first of those is mood. Now you can do this in Lightroom and Photoshop, but it's not as easily accessible. There are extra steps. It feels like finding these things in those programs is hidden. However, in Luminar Neo, this is front and center. It's literally a tab on the side that says Move. And when you click on that, you're able to apply LUTs to your photos. If you're someone who's used to working in video platforms, you'll know what a LUT is. And essentially, it's a lookup table which applies a certain look or filter to your photos. This is different from a preset. Once you're inside the mood panel, you're able to browse and use the pre-built in LUTs. I like a couple of them. I actually had a little bit of trouble trying to decide which one to use for some of my photos. But you also have the ability to add your own custom LUTs or LUTs that you downloaded for videos. All of these things have the ability to be applied to your photos, masked into certain pieces of the photo if that's something that you want, or even adjusted via a slider. Having this much flexibility and it being right there readily available is what makes Mood one of my favorite features of Luminar Neo. The next feature that really stood out to me was Face AI. And the part that really stood out to me is not only can you do things like slim a face, you can actually adjust the way that light lands on the face. This is something that would require Photoshop outside of Lightroom. However, with Luminar Neo, you can adjust it on one photo and then immediately copy and paste those exact settings onto other photos in that folder. That is part of the power of Luminar Neo. But what else stands out about Face AI is the drop-down menus within Face AI that allows you to tweak things like irises and whitening teeth all within this simple panel. And like everything else, it's maskable and adjustment slider ready. And if I had to pick a third top feature within Luminar Neo, it has to be skin AI. Now, a lot of these features have AI in the title and I think that Luminar Neo does a great job of using AI in a way to help speed up workflows. With Skin AI, there's a one-click remove skin defects button, which does a pretty decent job at removing normal noticeable blemishes, but it takes it one step further by having a skin smoothening feature that's more advanced than what you could do in Lightroom without having to go into Photoshop. And like I mentioned for the last feature, once you apply it to one photo, you can easily copy and paste these settings onto multiple photos or even all of the photos in your gallery. And while we're on the topic of copying and pasting AI features, if you've used Lightroom to edit multiple 
photos in a gallery and you've done certain AI things like AI masks or AI features within Lightroom and you copy and paste those things onto other photos, most of the time it's a long and slow process. One of the things that really stood out to me about Luminar Dio is exactly how fast and accurate a lot of those copy paste features are. I was able to copy and paste these specific AI enhancements that I did on one photo to a gallery of over 20 photos and it accomplished that in literally probably a minute or two. I have done very similar work in Lightroom and it has taken way longer than five or six minutes to copy that to only about 10 photos. Or don't get me started on Photoshop where you literally have to apply the same effects to every single photo file open multiple photo files if you're trying to get that type of look. I've talked a little bit about what I love about Luminar Neo, and you might be asking, all right, who exactly is this for? First of all, if you are someone who is brand new to photography and you're not looking to spend a ton of money on editing software or programs, but you do want something more powerful than what you can find for free, I'm going to recommend Luminar Neo to you. It's powerful enough to rival Adobe without the bill or subscription cost. While Luminar Neo does offer a subscription model, they also offer something that Adobe does not, and that is a perpetual license that allows you a one-time payment that's actually cheaper than a full year of Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. So if you want a lot of power, in, in my opinion, maybe even a little more power, and flexibility in editing without the subscription model cost, Luminar Neo is definitely a program for you to check out. The other person is the person who just wants to get away from subscription-based programs altogether. If you are someone who is used to editing in Lightroom and Photoshop, I can say that the computing power is there. The ability to make very similar edits is there and it's gonna save you money in the long run. All right, now that you know who it's for, and I've talked a lot about what I like about Luminar Neo, like the speed, the intuitiveness, the use of AI, I am gonna mention a few things that I think they could improve on. First of all, I don't think that the cataloging feature is as feature rich as something like Lightroom or Adobe Bridge. With Luminar Neo, you'll have to do all of those things that those programs do on your own in your own file management system. It's one more step and it's one little thing, but if cataloging is really important to you, you have a ton of files, you like to be extremely organized, that may be one step that, you know, you might have to work on. The other thing that I think could be slightly better is their generative AI. While it did work most of the time in the way that I expected, there were a few instances where I felt that it could have been improved, where I wanted it to completely remove an item and it left a few artifacts. As with most generative AI things, I believe that this is a lot of trial and error. Sometimes it'll get it right right away and sometimes it won't. That's just the nature of the beast of where AI is in generative fill and things like that at this point in time. While I may not be completely leaving Adobe right now, I do think that Luminar Neo has earned a spot in my toolbox, especially for personal projects and things of that nature. And while this was just a simply brief overview and review of all of the tools and things that Luminar Neo has to offer, if you're someone who's slightly interested or I've piqued your curiosity into what this program can do, Check out the link below and go ahead and try it for yourself. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer in the comments and I might even direct you to other people's videos who use this program way more than I have at this point. Also, if you're someone who's used Luminar Neo or who has completely made the switch, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. What made you switch? Is there something holding you back from switching? I'd love to know your experience down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. And as always, remember to do the work, believe in yourself, and most importantly, keep creating. Peace.